Hello, and welcome to Pierre the Chef. I am Christopher, and I am here, as always, with my good friend Steve. Say hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. I had the feeling you were going to do that. I, I, I like I'm... to steal 70-year-old jokes. Well, good job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you are exceeding beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, um, hey, quick question, uh, just at random here. Uh -huh. Millicent wouldn't happen to be around, would she? Millicent? Uh, yeah. No, I don't. She's not here with me right now no okay let's figure this uh show a picture of the uh, the newest member of the family here see if we can get this in focus on oh. the uh <gasps> camera here oh you have a husky yes we do oh my god husky puppy look at the size of those feet compared to the yes. rest of that, that sucker's gonna get large that oh, is oh boy her they... name is atlas oh uh, she is most definitely cameron's dog cameron has done all of the uh the research and uh preparation and caring and is doing a wonderful job with uh with the training actually i'm i'm i haven't seen it myself but i'm told that already atlas is trained enough that that cameron will tell her to sit and then get the food and pour it into the bowl and close the bag and put it away and wait there for like 30 seconds and then give the command and then atlas will go to the bowl and start eating wow yeah that, that is, is amazing yeah, most most dogs in my experience, it's like ooh food, glomp, and that's that's it. Yeah. But uh, but uh, he is doing a, a wonderful job with with her, and uh, oh. so we'll we'll see how this works out. I wasn't certain how Millicent would react to a a uh, husky being raised as sort of a service dog. I don't oh. know if that's the sort of thing that she would feel was beneath, you know, the hus what a husky should be and what oh. a husky should do, or if it's a such a wonderful charitable thing to help lesser beings like humans you know it, it could go either way i know that since stuffy has been working with her at the husky union resource trust or h-u-r-t uh she has her attitude has softened somewhat and and she has become a little bit more accepting of 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 huskies uh helping le as she would say less deserving breeds um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll have to I'll have to say something to her about it. I'm not exactly sure what uh, what she would think because with Melissa you can go either way. Sometimes she says something and you're like, oh, that's really great, and other times you just want to back slowly out of the room. <laughs> and other times she'll say something and you're like, oh, that's really nice, and then she'll clarify it and you're like, oh crap, I should have seen yeah. that coming. <laughs> oh, that's not nice at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I, yeah, go ahead. And I'm getting over a cold, so I apologize if I'm coughing a little bit on here. I'll, as I said before we start, I'll try to be uh, use the mute button judiciously so you don't have to hear that. So if you finish talking and then you see me blathering on silently, I forgot to turn the mute up because I'm an <laughs> idiot. No need to uh, remind me. <laughs> turn your mic on! Yeah. A genius would be a nice intro on hey. that to you know, hey. get my attention. <laughs> Hey genius, turn your mic on. I'll be like just like I'll be like a, a Bronx construction worker at a bar yelling at the TV. <laughs> turn your no mic on, genius. All right. Now uh we do not have Pierre here today. What? So I'll, I'll, just, I'll just I'll just jump right to that. Now, did, did he have something to do with the title because it looks like he wrote the title of this? He suggested it. Okay. Yes, I told him cuz you know as one of the most frustrating things about Pierre and his continual absence from our show is that we talk to Pierre a lot. It's not like Pierre just vanishes. Like we both have open lines of communication with Pierre. And this past week I was talking to him about, you know, our idea for the show. We, you suggested that we do kind of a potpourri show where we, we talk about different things that have happened in current events recently, instead of focusing most of the show on one topic. And, and I told Pierre about that. And, and he said, well, you shouldn't call it potpourri. You should call it uh, pot au feu, which is apparently a French stew that is like, you know, home, French home cooking, where they just take whatever meat or vegetables they have and they throw it all in the pot together. And, you know, so I said, OK, well, I'll call it current events uh, uh, pot au feu. And he was that, like, that makes nah. sense coming from a chef. Yeah. Yeah. So and now so I did it. And now he's not here. No, and I uh, he, he he told me that he couldn't get here because of the storm, which I'm not sure I'm buying because that doesn't seem like the sort of thing that would interfere with uh, a, a web stream. No, is it is it snowing in his house between where he is and where his his webcam is? I I, I don't know. It's you think that uh, I mean he didn't say anything about the power being out, you know, like because some areas did get. Up. 
But yeah. um, yeah, he didn't say anything about that. I I actually had to get up and shovel before uh, before yeah. breakfast. No, because and I, it snowed and then it turned over to rain overnight. So yeah. everything was going to be like a thick slushy mess. And uh, the forecast is that the temperature is going to drop throughout the day, and by like morning tomorrow, it's going to be about zero, possibly below. Oh, and if good. I didn't, yeah, and if I didn't shovel it immediately while it was still slush, it was going to freeze into a glacier, and I'd never get it off the driveway. So I had mm -hmm. to go out and shovel first thing, and when I went out, it was raining, and by the time I got to the bottom, it had gone through the sleep phase and turned back into snow. And it's, it's still snowing out there, actually. So, wow. Excitement City. But I got the worst of it up because, you know, wet, rain-washed slush. Uh, you let that freeze and you got a problem. Yeah, well, yeah, glacier is a good is a good term for it. You got it a lot worse than we did. We, we For anybody watching who doesn't know, we, we live a couple hundred miles apart. Uh, you're up in Pennsylvania and I'm down here in Maryland. And we, you got the snow and we got mostly just rain yesterday. And now there's not really anything going on. Um, it's kind of, it's starting to dry up. It's windy as hell. But, yeah. That's but, another yeah. thing that's coming. Yeah. So the, the um, before wind. we, before oh. we get too far into the, to our, <laughs> to our show, um, and we, 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 we dig into the pot of foo. Thanks Pierre. And if Pierre was here, he could pronounce it properly. Um, <laughs> before we get into, I wanted to mention, um, H bomber guy who is, who I'm sure everybody knows who is watching this knows who H bomber guy is, but just in case you don't, he's an awesome YouTuber who does, uh, you know, analysis videos and, and video essays. And he's really, really funny. Uh, he just, his most recent one, he did a measured response to, uh, flat earth, which was brilliant and hilarious. And I don't know him personally, but we have a lot of the same friends and acquaintances and I'm definitely a fan of his. And uh, he is doing a live stream on Twitch and I th and he's still going. He's been going for the last two days with breaks here and there. In fact, when I when we got on the air, I think he was he was taking a nap. He wasn't <laughs> on the air right then, but he's been on he's been streaming continuously all this time for about two days now. Uh, he is trying to play Donkey Kong 64 to 101 per, to a 101 percent completion. And I imagine some people watching know what that means means um <laughs> but the reason i he's, heard something about this yeah, yeah the reason he's doing it is he's raising money for mermaids which is this charity in the uk where he is from uh that helps uh trans children and teens it's an amazing cause and he has so far last time i checked he had raised a hundred and sixty six thousand dollars that is that is very impressive. Yeah, for for mermaids, and and he's still going. He's he he has. They have a little uh, progress bar. He has played Donkey Kong sixty four to about ninety eight percent completion. So he's almost done. He's got three more percent to go before he reaches his goal. Um, Probably and, the three most difficult percent. <laughs> like at the end of like a Super Mario Galaxy game, where you have to get the whole thing on one life and one hit point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So maybe he might be going for another week. Who knows? But it's, yeah, he. So good for him. Uh, I, I, it's an, an awesome. Call cause and god damn that's impressive over 160 some thousand dollars for a really deserving charity so yeah so um if you're watching us doing this live uh it won't hurt our feelings if you go and watch h-bomb stream um yeah. and if you're watching this you know we're recording this you can watch this after the fact but i just wanted to throw that out there that h-bomber guy is doing uh humanity's work and is yeah. and is really kicking ass over there on his twitch stream it's it's twitch.tv slash h-bomber guy if you want to check it out so just wanted to throw right. that out there Excellent. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I saw something about that, that he was doing that. And then somebody said all this, this effort to uh, promote, you know, all, or all this effort to promote mental illness. And he said, I appreciate your concern, but gaming isn't a mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He's, the, he's, he's, he's one of the funniest, uh, one of the funniest, like, big time or, or growing to be big time YouTubers that I follow. So, yeah. So, and that's excellent. I, yeah. I mean, I think you I think you may be doing YouTube wrong by doing something, you know, referring to something constructive instead of, you know, bashing people and supporting white <laughs> right. supremacy. So, but, you know, it's baby steps, baby steps, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, if only he You're, if only he could get some Nazis on the stream with him, then he'd have the number one promoted video on YouTube. Sure. That's that's the way it works. That's, that's the way it works. So was there any interesting stories uh, for you that came out of the uh, the holiday season here that are um, worth sharing? Oh boy. Uh not really. I mean, I uh we <coughs> we did the usual holiday stuff, you know, we went to to my family's for Christmas dinner and then we went uh Ashley and I and my wife just 
spent a quiet evening at home for New Year's. We watched the ball drop and drank uh, sparkling cider. <laughs> and because uh, we're both on the wagon. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, it was it was, it was just a nice it was, it was nice. Um, and is it a radio flyer wagon or is it one of those generic types? <laughs> It's actually a, it's a Conestoga wagon. If you must know, we we, we went all out. We said we said if we're not going to drink for a while, we're going to have a nice wagon to be on. Um, yeah, but no, it's it's an old it's an Oregon Trail wagon, and uh, I've already had dysentery twice, but I haven't died yet. So yeah, my Facebook feed when you when you uh, when the Internet Game Archive became a, a big thing, I went online and people were sharing it, and you sent me a a picture that I had had died of. I I think it was like. I don't know measles or something. I yeah. died on the uh, the trip, and he said, he said, yeah, sorry, you know, I'll miss you in your shallow one work grave. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a nostalgia trip too. When they when when the Internet Archive first put up all those old games, and you could yeah. play the Oregon Trail, and it's exactly the way it was when I was in elementary school. I mean, oh my god, because we used to live for that. When our teacher would say yeah. recess or or mm -hmm. you know computer time, and you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And oh, Oregon Trail! Like everybody played Oregon Trail, and it was the best. It was like yeah. this oasis of fun in the middle of a fucking dreary school day. Um, yeah, <laughs> boy, and killing all your friends. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Skype just popped up another window of you or of oh, us. It on did. The stream. Yeah, I don't know if it's broadcasting or if it's just. It uh, shouldn't be. I maybe don't. Maybe I can I, just close that myself and. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Maybe pop up on my screen. I don't know what Get the hell that was. It. Yeah, yeah, we always no, have I, software I, issues. With this. I, could, I, I don't I've think actually, I don't think anybody can see it. <laughs> yeah, I've actually started with the uh, found some stuff on the uh, abandonware. Uh, yeah. When we when we first got a um, when we first got our, our first computers from uh, some relatives, our aunt and uncle Mike, and they uh, had a couple of games on it, and there was the original Railroad Tycoon. Oh yeah. And there was like the the first PGA golf game that was DOS. These were DOS based games. Is uh, and uh, I found uh, Railroad Tycoon. Was playing a little bit, and then I went looking, and I I actually managed to find the golf game. I'm not a big fan of golf, but it's a huge nostalgia trip to be playing this again. Last yeah. night I I played, and I remember I used to be really good at it, and I'm I'm not anymore because it's been <laughs> over 20 years. <laughs> yeah, and um, I I had um, yeah. So it's, it's just interesting to to play this and and just to have the nostalgia factor because when I first started college we didn't have internet at home and when i came home for the summer i was working third shift so nights that i had off there was just really the computer and there wasn't uh, a whole lot of it wasn't an internet so there weren't a lot of options so i <laughs> played a lot of the golf game a lot of railroad tycoon and so I, i've been playing them a little bit just just the, the nostalgia of it's fantastic <laughs> oh yeah there's nothing like uh for me um <laughs> when they put up uh wolfenstein 3d I would. I still play that sometimes. I'll, I'll play it right off of the in, the Internet Archive's website. You know, I'll play it in the web browser. Um, that's just like, oh my god, I'm like 12 years old again. You know. Yeah, and it's um, not like watching. It's not like watching an old TV show and being like, wow, this is terrible. <laughs> this is problematic and it's terrible and the quality is bad. No, yeah. you, you play the game and it's like there's a certain charm to to DOS when uh, some of these older games where they actually had to come up with clever ways to do things and find shortcuts because there just wasn't the processing power. Yeah. Whereas now you just throw everything you can and you know, people's computer can't even run them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I threw a, I, I threw in an abandoned word joke in my, in my Star Trek video last week where I said, you know, look at all the holodeck programs that are on my abandoned where, <laughs> yeah. um, because I guess in, in the Star Trek universe, that would probably be a thing, right? As, as holodeck technology would continue to be improved, you know, like there would be the holodeck version of, of what we would look at the old like eighties and nineties DOS games as. Yeah. And, we, yeah. I have my I have my holodeck RISA program, but I hit the kill screen. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, Picard's original Dixon Hill program and it's just like, well it only goes as far as his office in the street right outside, but it's still pretty cool. And it's got the text-based options at the bottom that you have to. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to kick it. You just you kick the option that you want. Go oh go north. Go go north. 
and then you walk into the wall of the holodeck because it wasn't designed to deal with that. <laughs> oh man, that's a gold mine. That is that is a comedy <laughs> gold mine. Whoever's doing that, what is it, the lower decks cartoon, uh, which which is supposed to be like a a, a comedy take on Star Trek. Mm. Do someone needs to do like an episode where somebody gets like a first generation holodeck. <laughs> and they're just like walking into the wall or, you know, the, the holograms are all pixelated. They have like, you know, 16 bit yeah. holograms. So you can tell, <laughs> you know, like, come on, that's gold. <laughs> uh, in other uh, holiday news, yes. uh, I, at one point I, uh, on Christmas, uh, got a couple of different things. And one of them, uh, uh, Sarah had made some, um, some homemade uh, stacks or treats. And she also, she and her, her boyfriend, Josh had found and gave me a, uh, See, uh, The Simpsons, it's a... Uh, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a duff, duff beer. No, it's not beer. It's, it says energy drink. It a says wonderful energy. orange flavor. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, very I was on brand. Yeah, I was very... They very specifically told me that <clears throat> it's a novelty drink and they did not recommend actually consuming it. So it's still <laughs> sealed. Please uh, don't drink it. <clears throat> yeah. We care about you. Don't drink it. <laughs> Say no, I'm a Simpsons fan. A couple years ago, she uh, actually drew a picture of the Simpsons on the couch for me for Christmas, and it oh, was wow. it was fantastic. And then she probably considered it a sketch, but it was it was really well done. Yeah, she also did a, a TARDIS the one year. Oh wow! It's just the pencil drew a, drew up a TARDIS. I, uh, it's it's back here somewhere, but I'm not about to dig it out. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, good Christmas overall. Um, uh. Trying to figure out how specific I should get, or I should even go into this one thing here. Um, how, how much of your private life do you want to expose on the internet? Yeah. Be very sure. careful because yeah. I don't know if people realize this, but there are people on the internet who will take anything you say in a video and then will try to use it to hurt you. I don't know if you've heard of this. Surely such a thing could never have happened to you. No, no, it's never happened to me personally. <laughs> But I've heard of it happening to other people. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, thankfully, I'm sure YouTube is on the ball really smacking that down and preventing that sort of harassment oh, on yeah. their platform. Oh, yeah. There's no way that YouTube would allow that sort of thing to happen freely for years and years and years, even to the point that people who do nothing but that would become some of the most prosperous creators on the platform. There's no way that would ever be allowed to happen. All right. But without, without mentioning uh, names here... <clears throat> uh, we're going to start way back. When I was um, <laughs> probably in first grade, we the bus stop I was at was a very large bus stop. It was a, it was the trailer park, and there were a lot of people who would, uh, you know, mobile homes. And people would come and go. You had some people who lived there a lot. And then a lot of times you have people come and go. And it was considered a trouble stop because some of the uh, kids had issues sometimes. And, yeah. and at one point, there was briefly a, a kid named Brandy. And he was... Uh, he was, he was black, and he was in, I think, fourth grade. And at the time, it was like he was the biggest kid in the world. I mean, look how big he is. He's a fourth grader. You know, <laughs> no, things are at that age. And he had been – one time he was exchanging words with someone at the bus stop, and he didn't look real happy, and he, he went off, and the person's yelling after him or whatever. And uh, later, a relative uh, explained to me a little bit uh, about racism, as you would explain it to a first grader, you know. And um, – mm. And uh, at the end, they said something that's always stuck with me. They, uh, <clears throat> they said that if you were to, or if I was to um, call, if I was to use a, a racial, if I, if I was to call him the N-word, they said he would probably punch you in the nose and blood, you know, punch you in the face and bloody your nose, and he would be right to do that. Yeah. And that has always stuck with me for uh, relative to actually state that this was an offense that was severe enough to warrant violence. You know, that, that that really had an impact on me. Of course, now we argue whether it's okay to punch Nazis. It's like, why is this even a question? You know, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is not something that should be up for debate. But, um, yeah, so that has stuck with me. But uh, at this, uh, this particular uh, Christmas uh, at dinner, uh, this same relative was heard uh, to use the dreaded, I'm not a racist, but... Oh... <clears throat> And uh, the one that uh, I had uh, overheard, and they, they said that they weren't, um, they, they, they didn't use the word of fear. They, they, they said that they felt manipulated. They were being led to feel a certain way or something, and they didn't like it. But what they were upset about or were bothered by was the 
increasing number of interracial couples in commercials. Hmm. And I, I asked one question about when this started, and they said it's been about a year. And I didn't. Yeah, I. <laughs> it's been about a year. Yeah, I mean, they they had breakdown. They they knew like the combinations because uh, I oh guess some God. of them. And I, uh, and you know, there's a lot of ways you can go with that, but I just, I you, know, you don't want to make a, a big deal, you know. And, and maybe that's a, a middle class white guy privilege to, to let something like that, you know, kind of slide. But uh, yeah. all I all I really said was that television has always been very very white, and if it's starting to better reflect the the racial demographics of of the country on the whole, then I'm okay with that. And I let it go. Yeah. And. Uh, Night went on, and uh, you know, my sister was in with her young daughters, and I was uh, one of them. Was like, "Bet you can't catch me." I'm like, "Bet you're right." But uh, <laughs> eventually, uh, came over, and I was, I was actually carrying her around like like she was flying, and I and I'm holding her, and she's got her arms hanging down. I'm like, "You can't do that. You put your hands up straight in front of you when you do that." And you know, I'm teaching my niece how to fly, and uh, my uh, I started to get a little bit. Uh, my mind started to wander a bit, and uh, so. When a uh, little bit after that, you know, winding down, we're leaving, and my we're at my grandmother's house, and it's I'm sort of staring over my car into the darkness, you know, because your house is in the woods, so there's not a lot of light around. And the same relative was uh, walking past, and it's like, you know, lost in old memories, and I uh, said sort of, and I admitted first Christmas without Scotty, mm. because uh, that's sort of the long dark shadow that that's hung over this holiday season that we were all sort of aware of, but nobody really talked about. Yeah. And uh, when I said that, they were right there. They were supportive. They were, they were helpful. They, you know, they, they said the right things and uh, helped me get out of the funk that I was getting into. Cause I was about to drive home in the car by myself and you know, you, you get yeah. stuck with thoughts like that and that can be a, a bad thing. But uh, I mean, they were right there and, and helpful and no judgment and, and just, everything that you could want at that point. And uh, I wondered if I had made a bigger issue earlier, if that would have been different or stilted or awkward. You know, and I, I you know, I'm glad I didn't, you know, but uh, that's sort of the, the, the ups and downs of, of family in, in one, one afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of, um, there's a, I won't, I won't say specifically who, but there's a person in my sort of circle of family um, who I've known for a very, very long time and, and have, you know, have, we have our differences, but have looked up to for a long time and, and consider him to be like a, uh, you know, it's a, a very admirable sort of ethical, moral person. Right. And I remember hearing him say when, when I was younger, when I was a teenager, he would talk about how, um, you know, how he remembers the sixties and he remembers the civil rights movement and and he and he would talk like admiringly of that and admiringly of, of men like Martin Luther King and uh, and and he even he even said once like it he doesn't like he he doesn't like to hear like racial slurs he doesn't like to hear racially racist language um, and he doesn't even like to hear the term colored which once upon a time was considered the polite term for um, for a black person and is no longer considered acceptable today. But even today, when he hears someone say that term, it's like, oh, you know, he just he, he, he doesn't like it. Um, and I guess he was probably kind of a role model for me on that, you know, um, because here's a fellow white person who's older than me, who is from a, a previous generation, who is saying, you know, these things about the civil rights movement and black liberation and, you know, racial equality and saying th this is a good thing and racism is a bad thing and we should all be on board with this. And, you know, um, and then a couple years ago, we were at a like a family event and I I heard him say, uh, like, with kind of frustration or, or, or just impatience in his voice. Um, you know, you turn on the TV and all you hear is black lives matter. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I didn't say oh, anything. Man. I didn't say oh, anything. Man. I didn't say anything. And I still haven't said anything to him about it. We, we, you know, we see each other from time to time and I, I, I never made an issue of it, but it's just a reminder to me of, of just of how that can work. 
you know, because I still, I, I, I still generally think of him as a good person and as a person that I look up to. Um, but it's just a reminder that, you know, you can't, you can't let your attitudes get set in stone. And if, if you're, if you're on board with people like fighting for equality 50 years ago, you should still be on board with people fighting for equality today, even if it's different people and they're, they're fighting in a, in a different way or, you, you know, or maybe the, the inequality has shifted so that it's not quite the same as it was back then. Um, you know, it just, that was like a dagger in my heart hearing him say that because, yeah. you, you know, cause I, cause I was just like, why is it different now? Why, why are these people, why is their cause any less worth of your support than people who were doing something similar 50 years ago? Um, but yeah, so I, I kind of, I kind of know what that feels like, you know? Yeah. It's not, and it's, you're right. It's, it's, it's not as simple because if it was someone that you didn't know or someone that you didn't care about, you know, yeah. it would be, it would be easy to say, Hey, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah. You and know? it would be easier if they hadn't demonstrated very positive things in the past yeah. as opposed to just be, like, you know, if Tucker Carlson comes up with something racist, you're like, well, yeah, that fucking guy, whatever. Yeah. You know, and you just like, rush it off. But if it's somebody who you've looked up to and has said and done some very good things in the past and is suddenly not doing that anymore, that that's, that's a much more of a problem, which actually we're like half an hour in and we haven't really gotten into any of the <laughs> random topics. So let's segue from that directly okay. into uh, Louis CK. Oh my God. This fucking guy. <laughs> Take your money and buy a farm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Dave Chappelle bought a farm and disappeared and nobody even wanted him to. Why can't you just go buy a farm somewhere, Louis, and just disappear? Because what, what I've heard some people try to dismiss by saying, well, he was never funny anyway. It's like, no, this, yeah, you don't that's... understand. This, this is what he was funny and he was insightful and he made some very good observations and very strong points and said some fantastically good things, which is why this hurts so much more because he's yeah. not somebody who you can just dismiss from the beginning as garbage. He's somebody who was very much on the right path and saying the right things and doing the right things. And has gone completely off the rails. Yeah, it's it's someone who has demonstrated in the past that you you would think that that he would be smart enough to know what this is, and apparently either he's not, or he has this huge blind spot, or all the good stuff he said was just a smokescreen, or was just a stage persona, or what I don't whatever it's whatever is going on. But yeah, it's too easy to just dismiss it as well. He was never funny to begin with. Um, I mean, if you, if that's your opinion, fine. If you if you never were a fan of Louis C.K., that's that's fine. You're entitled to not like his comedy. But to a lot of us who are upset by this, yeah, the exact problem is that he was a brilliant comedian, and and a very insightful comedian. At least so it seemed. And now it's like, how the fuck could the guy who did that routine, you know, yeah, turn around sudden, and do this? And do transphobic material yeah. and to mock the Parkland survivors yeah. and to say, well, they should be doing drugs. Well, no, no. <laughs> and uh, what do they say? Like, we should listen to you because you, you got out of the way, but pushing some fat kid into the way of the. It's like, are you serious? I, it's, yeah. just, it's so incredibly clueless and tone deaf. It's, it, I, I feel like on some level, after his. Uh, his indiscretions, shall we call them, came yeah. out and he got into the trouble for that. He spent some time, said he was going to disappear for a while and, and consider. And I, you get the impression that what he ended up doing was saying, here is the one group that still supports me and didn't get critical of me for misbehaving. I'm going to pander to them now. Yeah, which is, I mean, <coughs> you know, maybe that'll allow him to continue to have something of a career. But uh, in terms of like your, 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 the growth of your character. <laughs> That's about the worst thing you could do. If you really fuck up and do something terrible and then you say, well, here's this group of people over here that didn't care about the terrible thing I did. <laughs> Let me just turn to them. Like that's the worst thing you could possibly do. Then you're just, you're just the guy who makes the terrible people laugh. Is that what is, is that the, the niche you're comfortable filling? I mean, that's not, <sighs> that's not what I would want. You yeah, know, that's also I mean, in, a, in just taking the position that I that that's not growing as a person. That's shrinking no. as a person. Oh, big time! Not even, yeah. It's a it's it's a, a massive 
shrinkage. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, it's 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 frustrating because a lot of his comedy was built on on at least the appearance of personal insight of of him realizing why certain things he thought or said or wanted to say were bad and and exploring that through his comedy and i mean the like the bit about the parkland survivors saying like oh we should we should think that you're you know an authority because you pushed a fat kid in the way like that's that's like fucking edgelord youtuber humor that's like the kind of of just deliberately offensive non-joke that people who uh aren't insightful or talented enough to write an actual joke would say you know, and it's disappointing, even if he's like, because that's another excuse people are saying is, well, you know, he's just going on stage and working out new material. Even if that's the case, it's disappointing that that joke got to the point where he said, I'm going to try this one. <laughs> yeah, you know? working, testing out new material, uh, that doesn't mean that, that doesn't justify it. I mean, especially if it's terrible material and offensive material, actively offensive material. I mean, he's not... This isn't something where it's a comment that's being taken out of context. I mean, he is basically attacking people. Yeah. People who who have who not only have done nothing wrong, but are trying as hard as they can to make our society better. <laughs> like I mean, our... he was ta he talked about how, you know, going out and having fun and doing drugs and not caring about things when he was that age and that's a it's like, yeah, and that's how a lot of the problems became worse and why the current generation of kids are inheriting the messes that we've left behind and they don't have the luxury to ignore them anymore because they're dying as a result of them. Yeah, really. Thank God there are kids who are in high school or college age who actually give a shit about the world they live in and aren't just concerned. I mean, look, I'm not, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, if you're a teenager or, 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 or a college student and you just want to party and whatever, that's fine. Do whatever you want. As long as you're not hurting anybody, but how can you possibly be against young people who have a social conscience and who are motivated to enter activism and advocacy and say, let's do something about these problems. Like I just, and especially when, when they know the eyes of the world are on them and they say, let's say something. Let's, as long as people are listening, let's tell them something important. Like, what goes through the mind of someone who says, I know what I'll do. I'll make fun of those kids. I'll <laughs> kick those kids. Like, what the fuck yeah. is going on with that? Yeah, it's like, I mock you because you survived. Yeah, you survived and you're doing, you're trying to do something meaningful with the rest of your life that will benefit not only you, but every, literally every other person who is in your country. And yeah, let's ha ha. Why should why should we listen to them? Ha ha. Like, yeah. god damn it. They should be coercing women into watching them masturbate because oh, that's like, yeah, that's yeah. that's that that apparently is acceptable behavior. Apparently, or no, or it's what all you have to do is just a admit that you did it and say you were sorry in a press release, and then in just... which you name all of your upcoming projects at the same <laughs> time, which always rang kind of false to me. Yeah, and th and then take less than a year off. And come back and, and act like you're trying to just slip back in like nothing ever happened. Like that's, and, yeah. And double down on what you did to get in trouble for. Yeah, it's, 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 it's disappointing. It's very disappointing. Yeah. As someone yeah. who, who previously was a big fan of his, it's, it's right. massively disappointing. Um, this might be a good opportunity, though, to segue into another one of the topics that I know you wanted to discuss, which is the uproar over the completely inoffensive and actually kind of awesome Gillette Razor ad. Yes, and I was actually, <laughs> I had been, I meant yesterday to write something for a video on that, and I ended up playing a video game and I uh, never got around <laughs> to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's just, I, I don't understand how you can be offended by that. Unless you feel personally called out by it. And if you feel personally called out by it, then that means that you're the one who's engaging in the sorts of behaviors that are, are a problem and need to be changed. And um, I just, I, I mean, I, po I put a long post up about this and yeah. I got a lot of likes. I had one person who was uh, fairly critical of the whole thing and, uh, you know, woke capitalism. And who is, you know, who are these people? <laughs> Who, who is this company to uh, to lecture me on this sort of behavior, or this sort of thing, or tell me what to do? And my feeling on that is, to an extent, yes. I mean, woke capitalism and capitalism is not something that 
really worries about social issues. Capitalism is all about the money. And yeah. when you see certain companies make decisions like no longer sponsoring uh, different people, generally that's because it's a PR issue that's hurting the bottom line. Like sponsors have bailed on Bill O'Reilly before he, he left the air, but it's not like they were suddenly made aware of the way he was behaving. They were perfectly fine with it until it became an anchor. And so you, I don't really give companies credit for that. But Gillette, this, this commercial works a bit differently because it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, um, it's not something they had to do. It's not something that anyone was calling for them to do, but it's something they chose to do anyway because it's an issue that matters. And they actually used their long-standing, well-known slogan to address it, which yeah. I thought was actually a, a very clever thing to do, very insightful thing to, uh, to, to put it into that context, which people are already familiar with. It's just, I, I really thought that it was a, a good message and it was something that they do deserve some credit for simply because if they hadn't done it, nobody would have thought twice about it. Right. And it, it's, uh, and the, the uproar over it is, is just so absurd. But again, it's, it's one of those attack the messenger things, you know, it's, uh, when uh, M just by name, Emma Watson spoke in front of the UN about yeah. women's rights, and all of a sudden people started attacking her. She's rich, she's white. Who the hell is she to be talking about this? When football players were kneeling to protest racial injustice, they people were getting giving them all sorts of grief. And I remember one person, or a lot of people, but one person I work with, even saying, "You're getting paid a lot of money. Shut up!" You know, and I'm like. How much money does a, uh, a black person have to make before racism stops affecting them? Yeah, which which they didn't answer. You know, it's it's just a common thing. You know, the part you know people are speaking about gun control and people like Lily C.K. are trashing them for it. Is this this thing about if the message is good but you don't like it, attack the messenger and their credibility to discredit the message? And I, I feel like that's some of what's going on here. They know that what Gillette was saying is solid and good, and they can't attack that, so they're simply attacking Gillette for being the one to say it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, you know, there is... there. Is, I, I'm, I'm a little sympathetic, or at least I can see where people are coming from, assuming that they're being sincere, which I think a lot of times they're not, but assuming that they're being sincere when they say, like, you know, do we want corporations dictating our morality, and do we want corporations, like, lecturing to us about how we're supposed to behave? Well, um, that ship has really sailed. That, yeah, well, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> First of all, we're past that. But second of all, um, yeah, I, I think it's it's a good point. You know, I don't think we we shouldn't be like looking to Gillette <laughs> or its parent <laughs> company, Procter and Gamble, uh, to you know, as like, what should we do now? Right? We sh that's not what we should do. But as long as we are in a situation, which which for better or worse, and a lot of it is for the worse, um, where corporations. And people who are going to try to sell us shit are going to be marketing things to us. Um, and that's that's sort of where we're at. And we're probably going to be there for the rest of our lives and probably <laughs> for a bit longer. Um, as long as that is happening and as long as that is something we have to contend with as a part of our culture, I would much rather be marketed to by companies that are calling me to be a better person <laughs> than pandering to my basest instincts. You could like like a Carl's Jr. Super Bowl commercial. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. I mean, and and I, I do not understand. I mean, I understand it. It's sexism and misogyny. I understand it, but I don't. I don't understand like the mentality or the, or the, the 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 rationality behind uh, watching that ad and being and and being offended by it. Because if you look at the things that that ad says, it it says uh the me too movement is good people who have been harassed and abused standing up for themselves and calling out their abusers is a good thing i don't have any idea why anyone would argue that that is a bad thing unless they're just a piece of shit themselves um that men should not harass women should not bother women when they're just minding their own business walking down the street should not bully people should not encourage like bullying or violent behavior in other people and if you see someone else doing that sort of thing, you should step in and say, hey, not cool. 
right? And actually, the ad people, you know, people like Piers Morgan and James Woods saying, "Oh, it's attacking men." The ad actually <coughs> celebrates men who who try to do the right thing. The, the a, par, a big part but of doing that, the right thing sucks. Yeah, who wants to do the right thing? But yeah, it it it, say, it says you know lots of men are doing this already, and they show like the scene of like the the dad pulling his kid aside and after they were having a fight and saying you know we don't treat people like that, or the dude like you know pulling his friend aside who's like you know cat calling a woman and say hey come on man, like they're celebrating men who do that who do the right thing who speak up and say hey come on like just act act right, and. So if you feel called out by that ad, like if you feel like that that ad is an attack on masculinity or an attack on men, when all it's doing is saying, uh, be a better role model for kids, don't harass women, don't abuse people, don't don't be a bully. Like I what I I I question how how <laughs> mentally emotionally broken and warped you have to be to watch that episode and go, I can't believe they're attacking men this way, you know? Yeah, it's. It there was um <clears throat> but what was that one uh, thing that got shared on facebook where somebody said uh broke it down as gillette says men can be better and the response is not all men <laughs> yes that's, which is perfect <laughs> but uh, exactly. it's just it was it i don't know if it was Piers more it was one it, i saw an article that had a bunch of the responses to it mm -hmm. you know twitter responses i don't remember who said it but there was one that was saying that, that actually cited the men who like stormed the beach at normandy as saying you know, well i'm going to stand up for men it's like just because some men do good things and some men do bad things doesn't mean that you have to put all men in one category or the other. Right. There, 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 there is room. I mean, how many people are there on the planet? Like six billion? Yeah. About half of them are men. There is room among three billion people <laughs> for some to be good and some to be bad without lumping them all together. Right. Like, yeah, okay, the men who stormed the beach at Normandy did a really good thing for civilization. I'm on board with that. But if any of them beat their wives, I'm not okay with that. You know what I mean? It's like, that. That's a, I can say beating your wife is bad. What about the men who stormed the beach at Normandy? Well, if they beat their wives, <laughs> fuck them. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I hope they were in the first wave. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck men who beat their wives. Fuck men who are sexist assholes. I mean, it, you 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 can't appeal to the heroism of one particular group and say there because they did that. Not only is it unfair to call out their bullshit, but it's unfair to call out all men's bullshit. Like that's I mean, ridiculous. And it and it changes for the same person. I mean, it, it's hard to believe that Fred Phelps, who founded the Westboro Baptist Church in his earlier days, was a strong proponent of civil rights and was the go-to person for cases of that type. Yeah. Before he before uh, things changed dramatically, shall we say? <laughs> yes, he he took a bit of a turn at a certain point. <laughs> it's a that's a path that Louis C.K. is trying to follow. Apparently. Uh, yeah, apparently he's following the Fred Phelps breadcrumbs. But that's 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 you know that's one individual where you have good and bad. You don't have to lump all men together one way or the other. And it's 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 and you know because this is such an issue. If somebody's bringing attention and saying, "Look, we can do better," yeah, then I'm all for that. As opposed to pretending that there's no issue, burying our hand in the sand and saying everything's fine. You know, it's, yeah. If you bring awareness to this, that's a good thing because this is something that people need to be aware of, and it's something that people need to change. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's encouraging to me because um, there's no way, as, as you were saying when we started talking about this, like Gillette is a corporation. Gillette is there to make money. I'm sure that this ad was focus grouped out the ass. And <laughs> if they genuinely thought through their market research that this ad would cost them billions and billions and billions of dollars, they probably would not have done it. Um, yeah, th th this was something that this was not something where where Frank and marketing threw it together on a weekend and snuck it out without anyone noticing. No, no, <laughs> this was this is part of a of a a, a company wide campaign. They've obviously planned it. They've obviously spent months developing it. The executives are all behind it. You know, it's the first thing you see. I went to the Gillette website yesterday because I was doing research for for Monday's video, um, and the first thing you see is is like a pop up about this about you know mm -hmm. we believe men can be the best that they can be right so. There they're all in on this, and if they genuinely thought that this was going to destroy their brand, they wouldn't have done it, which is encouraging to me because it means they did their research and they found that actually 
the the culture has reached a point and the the the, the market of their customers and potential customers has reached a point where this would not only be accepted but this would be a good thing for them that this would make their company look good and would probably boost their bottom line and if we are in that situation as a culture now where a company that markets primarily to men i mean gillette sells women's razors and women's shaving cream and stuff but i think it's it's perceived mostly as a male-centered brand that 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 if that brand decides to go ahead with a major marketing campaign centered around supporting me too and and challenging men to be better people that's a good thing that's a good even sign cap even capitalism is saying Racism sucks. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no profit in this. YouTube is still getting there, but Gillette has decided that. Yeah, yeah that, that that you know if you if you lose the uh, the racist component of their their uh, customer base, that, that, that they'll be all right. Yeah, which yeah, exactly. Which is which that and that's the thing that the racists <clears throat> and the the open like just just vulgar, blatant misogynists and et cetera, et cetera. Like that's that's sort of their last card to play is like well you'll lose our business and as soon as companies start saying yeah good <laughs> go like we don't need you then the game's over <laughs> you know as soon as you as soon as you realize you know actually i don't need these assholes and i don't really want them so go ahead <laughs> leave <laughs> fuck you like once you get to that point they have no other cards to play once the, once they're forced to confront how irrelevant and powerless they are in in the larger culture like that's it <laughs> you know so come on, <laughs> let's let's get there a little faster, please. <sighs> what else do we have in the uh, in, well, in the in the uh, the? If we're going to potpourri. finish up, I get continue with the uh, recent thing. Was there the the whole uh, news story about the uh, in in what was it Washington D.C. with the, uh, the the March for Life and the uh, the Native American veteran? Yes. Was that... Yes, uh, Nathan. F Phillips, I believe, was his name. Right, yeah. I, I think that is right. I, uh, I've seen it, but I, not retaining it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know the thing about that because uh, he was he was basically harassed by this small mob of of Trump supporting mm -hmm. douchebag <laughs> white kids, and um, who some of whom apparently seemed to mistake him for a Mexican or for an immigrant, which is he's, he's literally the exact opposite of that. That's right. Um, and it reminded me, there was a picture um, a couple years ago, I think someone shared another one of these fucking clueless Trump supporting dipshits. They, they shared a picture of a, a native American family who were, who were at Mount Rushmore. And it was a picture of all of them in front of Mount Rushmore. And they were giving Mount Rushmore the finger. Yeah, I, I remember that. And, and pe people yeah. got really bent out of shape over that. Yeah, and this one guy who shared it, he said, they come to this country, you know, <laughs> they take our jobs, they take our welfare, and then they do this. And it's like, okay, first of all, fuck you. You're an anti-immigrant asshole. Second of all, they're not immigrants. And they immigrants. take the jobs and the welfare. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're not immigrants, dipshit. They're Native Americans. They, they're, they're descended from people who were here already. Um so I guess anytime some of these people, like anytime they see anyone with brown skin, they're just like, well, they don't belong here, which I think is pretty much all you need to know about that mindset. But, but yeah, they were, they were harassing this guy who is, who is a, a long time leader in his community and an activist for equality and, and civil rights. And, and they harassed this guy. And of course he took it with the kind of, of restraint and dignity that oppressed marginalized people have always had. Um, and yeah, it's just, and, and the, the, the worst thing to me is the amount of the number of people making excuses for these asshole kids who were doing this saying like, well, yeah. you know, when you were a teenager, you probably did shit you were ashamed of too. Well, yeah, no, no question. Of course I did tons of shit that I'm embarrassed about. I never, um, I never joined a hate mob and surrounded a civil rights activist. <laughs> never did that and I, I i would hope that my parents or adults in my life would not be trying to let me off the hook for that if i did do it because otherwise i'm not going to become a better person when i grow up just an idea but yeah yeah i, I saw that the other uh, school they attended uh they somebody briefly on on google had managed to include the uh the phrase it was it was it covington catholic high school yes that's the they school. changed it to covington catholic white male privilege high school <laughs> at least <Yeah>. temporarily <laughs> yes yes it's just 
it's there's this I don't anyone who actually understands the history of this country knows that the uh, if you're talking about people the native population is not white people. <laughs> yeah, I mean yeah. that's and it's amazing how eagerly and blithely these people just ignore that like they just pretend it's not even a fact you know facts are facts are negotiable yeah yeah it's just it's ridiculous and it's it's yeah. a disgrace it that is. this is where our country is i mean and honestly people you know for the there's an extent to which uh we can very plainly say that it's always been this way yeah and that we're just a lot more aware of it now so when people are saying we're getting worse as a country, I don't know that overall we necessarily are, although we've certainly taken a step back during this administration. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that it's not so much that it's worse as that we're a, more aware of a lot of the things that do go on. Like a lot of these, uh, <clears throat> like, you know, traffic stop shootings and, mm -hmm. And Eric Garner and, and Philando Castillo and, and Tamir Rice and the, the, the list of names goes on and on and on. Yeah. Those are things that, you know, 30, 40 years ago you generally wouldn't know about because there was no internet. That information would not hit the news. These things happened and were just sort of swept under the rug. And it's a lot harder to do that now. And so a lot of these things gain traction where they wouldn't have before and become very much a, a public, uh, part of the public knowledge. And people react to it. And, uh, it, it's it's something that has gone along gone on all along and is just a lot more uh, evident now than it used to be yeah that's and that's sort of like that's that's the the most important and the most depressing insight <laughs> you know is like this isn't anything new it's just that we're hearing about it now more than we would have i mean obviously police brutality if you want to use that example is not something that just started happening 5 years ago you yeah know, i mean the rodney king riots yeah. when that when that video was first aired on the news I, I understand that it was an hour-long news uh in los angeles mm -hmm. and it didn't air until about halfway through the uh through the broadcast simply because it wasn't considered noteworthy enough to be near the top that was such a common or routine thing that having video of it did not get it to the top of the news it got it you know buried in the middle and somehow that one is one that gained traction and uh yeah became a, a very, very big issue. Yeah. And I mean, to anyone, to, to anyone who like, who has, who, who is trying to have sympathy for the people who, to the young, for the young people who were harassing this guy. Like, I, I, I get that. I understand there's like a parental instinct and I understand like, you know, they're just kids and they're misguided and they've been misled. And, you know, that's, I, that's a great, that's a nice, like compassionate response, but, please don't make excuses for what they did. You know, yeah. like they're never going to get any better. They're never going <clears> to <throat> learn. They're never going to grow beyond it. If you, if you jump in as if, if they are the targets, the, the subjects of national outrage because of what they did, which is what they deserve because what they did was outrageous and horrible. Like, please don't jump in and say, Oh, come on, take it easy on the kids. You know, they didn't know any better because if they don't see why what they did is it ought to be totally unacceptable then they're never going to they're never going to get beyond it i mean I, there was this documentary um that that they used to air it seemed like they used to air it every weekend on msnbc like 20 years ago when when msnbc would basically just everybody would just take the weekend off and they would just air like reruns of old <laughs> episodes of dateline <clears throat> and and there was this episode of dateline that they used to rerun like it seemed like every saturday it was on and it was about this group of teenagers who got together, there was like three or four of them and they, they got together and they murdered one of their teachers. And then they all went to prison and there was an interview with one of the kids from prison who I think at, at that point he was like 18 or something. And they had been tried as adults and they were sent to prison for like the rest of their lives. And, uh, and one of the kids demonstrating that he had learned absolutely nothing in, from his years of confinement. He said, look, we made a mistake. That's how people learn. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, okay, you did make a mistake. It's good that you recognize that. <laughs> but, I mean, you 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 premeditatedly murdered somebody, and now you're basically saying, yeah, look, you know, our bad, we goofed, let us have a do-over. Like, that's, that, that's not how it works. And that's the kind of attitude that you get if you just say, oh, come on, they're just kids. 
you know, yeah, they are just kids. Hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll grow to be ashamed of this at some point in their lives, but it's not going to happen if you keep making excuses for them and jumping in to defend them when they do something that's, that's absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned before when I got unfriended today by somebody who had uh, posted uh, something about be nice if we worried more about, you know, government corruption than, you know, some kids who are acting like fools. And I'm like, well, the kids who act like fools now become the adults who do those things later on if they don't learn in the, in the interim. And, uh, yeah, that that obviously, since I got friend, did not go well. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> I said, well, you know, but I said, if you're def- if you're defending racists and bullies, you're going to look like you're a racist and bully, and and, and yeah. they did not appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's that's what you're doing when you have somebody who basically goes out and does it in this sort of passive aggressive way, where if somebody. Like, if the guy had not handled it, called me and had, like, shoved him or something, he'd say, I was just standing there and he attacked me. It's yeah. a passive-aggressive way to try to provoke a response. And yeah. he wouldn't be provoked. But if, you know, you know that if uh, the guy had shoved the kid in the hat, then all of a sudden, you know, Fox News and all these different outlets would be saying, you know, well, here's a kid just standing there and he gets shoved by some provocator. You, you know, they'll, they'll turn it around. <laughs> some provocative <laughs> Native American just standing there minding his own business. <clears throat> Um, well, well, you know, know that's that, it's the one thing they say that, that I, I something I saw on Facebook I really liked that said they never see uh, they never see how you provoke they only see how you retaliate. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and you know that that line about well, we should be worried more about government corruption and less about whatever. That's disingenuous because we are worried about government corruption. You can worry about things on different levels at yeah. the same time. <laughs> different people are worried about different things, and I think. I mean, pretty much anybody who pays any attention to the news and politics in this country at the moment is at least a little worried about government corruption, right? I mean, it might not be the only thing we ever talk about, but it's certainly on a lot of our minds. And it it seems disingenuous to suggest that it's not, to suggest that, like, the only things people are upset about are, you know, I guess what they would consider, like, frivolous sources of outrage. I don't consider it a frivolous source of outrage, but... um, that's just not the case. You know, it's just not the case. People have been have been deeply preoccupied with government corruption for for about two years now, strangely <laughs> enough. And, and, and some people going back a lot further than that. Um, but, yeah, it's it's just it's a disingenuous objection. You know, I wish people would worry more about my pet issue than other issues. Well, you know, or, or you just or it's a dismissal of this simply because it's if you pretend that the larger things have to be dealt with first, then you can let the small things go. Well, no, you have to call out the small things before they become big things. Yeah. And you can, you can multitask. You can do both. You can, you can, you can call out the big things and the small things and, and you probably should, you Mm -hmm. know, like uh, politics isn't one issue at a time. (laughs) That's why, that's why there's 500 members of Congress, not just one person. (laughs) You know, like we could probably just let one person handle this. You know, that's not that, it, it, you need to be able to, to, to you know, have multiple uh, balls in the air at the same time. Yeah. But getting in the face of a Native American war veteran with a bunch of racist crap, that apparently is not as big an issue as a Gillette commercial that says, be good to other people. Yeah, that's, the, that's what we really need to worry about. We need to worry about corporations <laughs> asking us to be nicer to each other. And don't tell less... me what to do. I'll be as much of a shitlord as I want to be. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a that's a mature attitude, right? That's what that's the mark of a mature, confident man. When he sees a razor commercial and he's like, "Fuck that!" and it fucking flips the table and throws a tantrum on Twitter about it. That's yeah. that's the mark Isn't of a, a true a confident picture man. Picture on on Twitter of somebody who had destroyed a Gillette razor. It says, "Man told to be nicer to people destroys razor in fit of rage." More at eight. <laughs> Well, it's just like um, a couple weeks ago, there was a, a miniature version of this about the uh, the vegan sausage rolls in the UK. Oh, what? There's, what there's, the, the, where, how is that even? I, I tried to ignore that because like, how is this even an issue? What are you talking about? Just don't buy the vegan roll. Like, what is the... I, <laughs> well, I don't understand. Okay, look, I'm, I'm a vegetarian. I'm not I'm not a vegan. I'm a vegetarian, so I but I would totally try the vegan sausage roll because I, I eat like meat substitutes. You know, I eat like Morning Star Farms, like chicken nuggets and burgers and stuff. And it's like it's not meat, but it's meant to resemble it. And some of it's pretty good. 
Um, and like if that w if if I was a fan of their sausage rolls and they came out with a vegan sausage, I would totally try it. But if I was not a vegetarian, I would just ignore it. And how I, does it? And it doesn't hurt other people if if a no. person who wants a vegan sausage roll eats a vegan sausage roll. It's no. not like you're. It's not like you know defending a racist. It's defending. I want to eat something that you don't. It. it it's not an issue. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's like, how dare you give people an option? Um, and, you know, and it's the same thing. The thing that reminded me of it was when you mentioned, like, the person destroying the razor to make a point. Um, someone made a video of they, they went into the place and they actually bought one of the vegan sausage rolls and they shot it on their phone and they paid for the roll. And then they took it right outside and they threw it in a trash can on the sidewalk. And someone replied and said, yeah, that'll show them buying their product <laughs> like you paid for the sausage roll dipshit you gave them your money you helped make this product a more successful product and then you didn't even eat it you threw it in the trash i mean it's like for for years before i was a vegetarian for years burger king had uh, a veggie burger on their menu i mm -hmm. i never ordered it until i was a vegetarian i it didn't bother me it wasn't offensive to me. I didn't like go in and demand they take it off the menu. I just didn't order it. And now that I am a vegetarian, when I go to Burger King, that's what I order because it's the only thing I can eat. Um, <laughs> and also, it's pretty good. It's not. It's 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 not bad. And you know, like, like if I, if I don't eat fish, I'm not going to go to McDonald's and rough right? up the cashier for selling fillet of fish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like fish. Why is there fish on this fucking menu? Like, what is wrong with you? What what happened in your life? You know, like I like Coke. Why are you serving Sprite? Because <laughs> some people like that better. Like, what the what is the problem? Go home. Go back to your home. Don't leave your home ever Don't, again. Unplug yeah, your computer. I, yeah, I gotta admit, I'm 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 not a vegetarian, but uh, a lot of the stuff with. Uh, Food production with meat is is pretty awful, and if they can get to the point where they're they're like making meat like not actually from animals, but they're like doing the substitutes and stuff that are actually essentially the same thing, but yeah. we're never actually. You've heard about stuff like this, right? Yeah, like, like, to like lab grown meat. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. If if they can do that and there's no issue with it, it tastes it. I'll switch over to that, no problem. Oh man, yeah, I'm waiting for that. Yeah, there, there, there are a couple of meat substitutes now that are there are that are not that like they're not actual lab grown meat um, mm -hmm. because that's still probably quite a few years away from being like a marketable thing. Um, but but if it is, if I have a choice between having essentially the identical food yeah. and one of them came from an animal that was raised and killed and 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 you know the horrible conditions you see with like chicken farms and stuff yeah if i have the choice of that or something lab grown where they see they put some stuff together and bam you've got the meat without anything else then yeah i'll go for that i'll prefer that i'll take if i have the choice i'll take the lab grown you know every day of the week and twice on sunday oh totally but but uh you know we're not there yet unfortunately no and you know there's still going to be some assholes who are going to be like i don't want to eat anything that hasn't suffered first <laughs> You know, if it didn't spend its final moments in, in, in uncomprehending terror, I, I don't want to eat it. I, I want I want to eat a carcass of something. I don't I don't want to eat something that was grown in a lab that, that nothing was harmed in its production. I need to have something that died in order for me to live. So Ted Nugent, basically. Um, uh, yeah. You can't hunt a Petri dish. OK, Ted, go, go, go away. But yeah. <laughs> Ted has not had both oars in the water for a long time. Oh no, no, no. <sighs> so, but, have we got to the point where we talk about uh, Star Trek and comics and TV yet? Yeah, have we? <laughs> has this gone through the five minutes of Trump? Or are we going um, to go through like the government shutdown oh, and, and do, cover the five minutes of Trump and the government shutdown? Let's do five minutes. Oh well, of the Trump. graphic is on the other side. Yeah, I moved because, it because you're off center. Because so you moved it to the other side, so there's more room for it. Exactly. Let me see what it looks like when I put your face on there. Yeah, there's plenty oh of room. Okay. <laughs> I said I can set up straight and make this a little bit more of a difficult. No, do you want your? You don't want your head close that close to Trump's. So you just keep your your no. normal position there. Which way? I gotta go this way. Yeah, I, I lose track of the left and the right because of the river. Yeah, there. There you go. Yeah, just yeah, just get all the way off camera. There you go. Just leave the frame entirely. That's good. 
That's good. I've never looked better. Now get down on the floor. No, come back. Come back. Come back. It's awkward. All right, all right. It's awkward. Come back. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> you're just talking at the top of the chair. I know. Who's, he's talking to the invisible man. Okay, I'm going to start the timer. We can talk five minutes of Trump and government shutdown and this horrible nightmare world in which we live. There we go. So, yeah, it's now the longest government shutdown, federal government shutdown in American history. And it was done for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Am I am I on that? Am I have I got that pretty much right? It's, it's, it's because the president is throwing a tantrum because he can't get his wall. So he shut it down and people like Mitch McConnell are happy to enable him and, and yeah. say, yeah, I'm not the one being hurt by this. So hell with it. His his completely useless wall that would not even solve the problem he wants it to solve if that problem existed, which it doesn't. They say that most of the uh, the illegal immigrants in America are like for like the last seven or eight or ten or something years running have overstayed their visas rather yeah. than crossing the border. Most, yeah, exactly. Most, the the great majority of, of uh, undocumented immigrants are came through legally and just overstayed visas. Um, and the drug problem is is this is very much the same. Trump, he says, you know, you can't. First of all, they have tunnels. They have yep. ladders, they have planes and ships. Like if you build a wall around the border, I'm pretty sure the fucking drug lords are gonna get the drugs in some other way because they're doing that already because it's something like 90% of the illegal narcotics that are smuggled into this country from other countries come through ports are snuck legally. through, are, yeah. come well, through. Legally. I mean, yeah, they, I mean they, they're, uh, they're, yeah, they're smuggled. Like they're, they come <laughs> in illegally, but they come through like the checkpoints. They're not dragged over the border where no, nobody's at. That's not the way it's done. I mean. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Like you wouldn't ship, even if you're shipping something illegally, you would want to ship it through the usual trade routes. You wouldn't, I mean, it would be a huge expense of manpower and equipment and, 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 and material to drag every, to find like remote locations in the middle of nowhere and transport your drugs that way and do it so that nobody would see you. I mean, yeah, most of it comes through ports and comes through checkpoints. So the wall will not help with that at all either. So it's a completely useless vanity project that is just there to rile up the fucking racist shitheads who still support this guy. And right, which is embarrassing yeah. that there are some, but yeah. And yeah. other parts of this, uh, in Pennsylvania, uh, food stamp benefits, SNAP benefits, because of the uncertainty about funding going forward. Uh, last week, they issued all February benefits to everyone at the same time because they're not sure how much longer the money is going to be there. So they, they 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 got that out early. I don't know if that was nationwide or if it was I'm just Pennsylvania. Sure. But Pennsylvania sure. issued it all, all February benefits. And, uh, <clears throat> and, you know, some that's a mixed blessing because people are getting it before the money goes, but then they'll spend it and they'll have nothing for February. And I've uh, heard some, you know, mocking people like uh, somebody I work with was actually like, well, you know, they'll, they'll ask what they're supposed to do. I'll say, get a job. Never mind the fact that most of the people who get benefits do have jobs, but yeah. still can't afford to, you know, to survive in our economy. But my feeling is stop voting for a party that will shut down the government as, as a political stunt. Exactly. That's because that, there's, yeah. there's there's absolutely no reason for this shutdown. This is a stunt, and people are getting hurt, and things are shutting down, and we've got you know the the Joshua Tree National Park where people are cutting down trees to get in areas they're not supposed to be. Yeah, you know it's 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 a very libertarian situation out there right now. <laughs> we're seeing how responsible people are with it when there's not government oversight. Yeah. And this, this is where we are, and uh, it's not accomplishing anything. It's not helping anything. It's hurting people over one man's ego. Yeah, yeah. And if, if and I, I will, I, I give a lot of credit to the Democrats for sticking to their guns. I'm glad that they, they've, they've remained very steadfast, even after Trump, he, Trump made his little fucking offer yesterday saying, you know, I'll extend <coughs> DACA protections for three years or whatever. And the Democrats still said, no, we're not paying for the wall. Forget it. Um, I hope they stick to that. And I, I applaud them for doing that, but I do kind of wish that they would do a better job of make of, of telling the story nationally. In Democrats are not good at messaging. No, no, they're terrible at messaging. And this is a, but this is an easy message. Like if yeah. they if they would 
just find a way, either just make it part of their regular talking points when they go on talk shows or ask mm -hmm. for some network time to just do like a 30 minute presentation, like a 30 minute address, yeah. have Pelosi and Schumer do it. I don't care who does it, but, mm -hmm. and just make the case point by point factually why the wall is a complete waste of time and money, why the problems that it's meant to solve don't exist and why even if they did exist, it would not help. You know, right. I wish they would do that uh, a lot more effectively than they have been. I noticed it is with this new timer, did, is there like a, a soft drop shadow that didn't used to be there on it? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I added a little bit of a drop shadow. I get all sorts of fancy. This is no longer amateur hour. Classy. <laughs> It's classy yeah, we're, now. We're we're making uh, we're making progress. Yeah. So five minutes of Trump is up. Yeah. We can we can we, we can banish him to the ether, at least as far as our broadcast goes. Mm hmm So yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Excellent. So that's yeah. We we didn't really stick with one topic especially long, although there may be a little bit of theme in there. But uh, we're going to go over a couple of random things rather than try to devote forty five minutes to an hour to a uh, single topic. Yeah. It's a good call because I don't know if I could have done an hour just on the Gillette commercial. I mean, I yeah. could have, but it would have been. Or on Louis C. It would, would have been reaching. We would have been reaching by the end. It would have descended into just angry shouting by the end. Like, God, I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. God, what the fuck is wrong with people? You know, yeah, it would have gotten, that, that's gotten to it, that point. Honestly, that's what most of these issues we talk about boil down to, though. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with people? That, that's pretty much it. There is an inarticulate rage response for all of these in me. That I, I could, it's like, I mean, God damn it! He's <laughs> like, why are, why is this a problem? Are these people for real? Yeah. What fucking, what fucking? It's like uh, Kyle McLaughlin at the end of the new Twin Peaks. What year is it? Like, what the fuck is going on here? Um. So hey, I, I don't know what your what your your uh, your plans are or your 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 situation is, but how, did you get a chance to see the new episode of Discovery yet? No, I have not. Okay, I, I plan to keep up with it. But last time after the entire season was out, I, I right. kind of binge watched it. Like I was watching one episode, and, not, and then I watched two, and then I watched the last three in one go because I, yeah. I was really getting into it. But uh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I intend to, but I haven't yet. Yeah, actually waiting till a couple episodes are stacked up and binging it might be the best way to go because we watched uh, we watched it when it came out last week. Mm -hmm. And after it was over, I, I turned to Ashley and I was like, man, this is going to suck waiting a week between episodes because I'm so <laughs> spoiled by Netflix that, you know, if, if they had released like the whole season at once, like Netflix does, I would have fucking stayed up all night and watched it. Like the first episode was really good. It was one of the strongest episodes that they've done so far. I thought. Yeah, was, I'm just hoping yeah. that they they have somewhat of a a wider approach. Everything in the first season tended to be very somber and very heavy and and kind of dark in ways. And I'm hoping that they you know that they don't make it a lighthearted romp, but that they they. Try to have a little bit of fun with it in a way they didn't in the first year. Yeah, judging by the first episode, and it's that's dangerous to do because the season, yeah. especially with the show like Discovery, where the first season definitely went through some major ups and downs and a lot of <clears throat> shit happened, so you can't really judge the whole series by the first episode. But yeah. um, judging by the first episode of season two, the tone they they they're striking a much nicer balance of the tone between sort of fun, adventurous stuff and more serious, like dramatic stuff. Um, I'm okay with that. Hopefully because, they maintain that. Because it, it kind of needed it. The, the show was, it wasn't bad, but that was one of the uh, the criticisms that I had of it, that it was very, uh, it, it didn't take a moment to breathe and have fun. And, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of just people interacting and, and being people. It was all dark plot driven stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they've they again in just the first episode, it's hard to say which way it'll go or, or how long this will be maintained, but they there was a little little tiny bit um of of screen time devoted to getting to know the bridge crew, which was something that I really missed from the first season was like you got a lot, you know, you of obviously Burnham is the lead and you get a lot of time with Saru and with Tilly and with and with Lorca and right. with uh statements, but like, you know, the, the But hell what the hell is when a navigator just sort of there? Yeah. Like every episode, but yeah, you, know, you barely even they, they barely even said or did anything. Yeah, they didn't have very much to do and they weren't really established as characters and there wasn't really like an, an established rapport between like the the, the crew. And they they took steps in that direction 
in the first episode. They they didn't do a lot with it, but like there there's there's a scene because uh, Captain Pike comes aboard, and there's a scene where uh, he he basically says, "Okay, give me a roll call so I know who I'm, who who you know who I'm serving with." And they went around, you know, and and you know, sort of sounded off. And I thought, well, for some of these characters, I think it's the first time we've actually heard their names on screen. Um, and yeah, uh, and I that, thought that, that was a cool way to do it because Pike that's a good way to do them. it. Yeah. It's 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 sort of like, and it's it's not as hackneyed as you know introducing the uh, the audience to a situation by giving a character amnesia and having him remember things <laughs> and say them out loud right. as it comes back to him. You know that that's kind of a bad way to do things. Kind of obvious. So yeah, yeah it sounds like a better a better approach there. Yeah. So it was it was a very it was a very encouraging beginning. So hope hopefully you enjoy it when you get around to watching it. And I'm I'm going to be like you know biting on a piece of leather. <laughs> for, for, during the week waiting for the new episode to come out because i'm very i you know it's 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 a good star trek show and uh, the the i the the idea of like a, a good new star trek show being mm -hmm. produced is very very exciting to me so um I'm so that's eager, a pretty this yeah. is a pretty impressive amount of discussion of an episode that i haven't even seen i like <laughs> and i haven't spoiled anything for you <laughs> and i appreciate and, that except for i i guess i spoiled the fact that pike asks what people's names are so I, I, hope that, that. I hope that I hope that didn't ruin that. it for you. <laughs> and then yeah, the ship be... blows up at the end, and everybody dies. But no, that's every movie. That's every. <laughs> uh, that's, Let's blow yeah. up. I I know. Let's blow up the ship. <laughs> well, we need a. Uh, I guess we need a a good uh, show since it's questionable if there's going to be another movie or not. Oh yeah, that sucks too. I'm. I mean, I'm. Uh, the the return of discovery and and the first episode being so good has kind of distracted me from that but that's a bummer for me you know that apparently there isn't going to be a, a star trek 4 because um i i know not everybody liked them but i really enjoyed the kelvin timeline movies and i especially enjoyed star trek beyond and it's it kind of sucks that that's it yeah, look it looks like that's probably going to be it for that. the last one was a lot better i mean i i it got more into the exploring strange new worlds, which Star Trek is theoretically supposed to be about, <laughs> and it was far enough along that the characters were actually interacting with each other and working with each other and trusting each other in a way they yeah. hadn't for the first two movies. It was like, for a movie that it seemed like nobody wanted to be involved with and nobody wanted to make, it turned out very, very well. Yeah, and, it, it and, was it was a lot closer to like, like classic Star Trek, even than a lot of the classic Star Trek movies were, you know what I mean? Like it really nailed the tone of, of that show and, and like, yeah, like the teamwork and the camaraderie that they had. Um, and considering the hostility at the first trailer for that movie, it yeah. really turned out to be what it was supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. It was a really, it was a nice surprise, you know, and it's, it, it, it's a good note to go out on, you know, if, if it turns out to be the last one, like it is, it's nice to finish with the best one. Um, but yeah, it's it's a shame because yeah, and uh, they they the director has has taken another job, so that's never a good sign. Uh, and it doesn't look like the salary impasse with uh, with the two Chris's, Chris uh, Chris Pine and Chris Hemsworth, is are going to be resolved. So um, looks like we're not going to get another movie. So it's oh a well, shame. it's a shame. It's a shame. But Star Trek is not an Avengers movie in terms of what it's going to make at the box office, so they they can't throw as much money at people. Maybe they should. But, and you know. I mean, if it was me, I am very, I'm, I'm, I, I tend to side with labor in these things. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, to me, if Captain Kirk wants more money, give Captain Kirk more money. Like that would be, <laughs> if I were the studio executive and my, and one of my guys came to me and was like, you know, oh, well, I don't know. Pine's asking for more money. Well, okay. But he's Captain Kirk, right? Yeah. He's Captain Kirk in the Star Trek movie. We'll give Captain Kirk whatever he wants. You're like, <laughs> you know, and then the studio would go out of business. <laughs> because they'd be like, well, he wants all the money. <laughs> but yeah, it's too bad. But yeah, Discovery so far is is looking good. They they are we, you still get these little dribs and drabs of updates about the Picard series that apparently they're scheduling to come out late this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, that so this will be this will be an exciting year. We'll get to watch Discovery and we'll get to get all these little updates about the Picard show, which apparently they don't even have a title for yet, which <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hopefully they come up with something before it comes on. Star Trek Untitled. <laughs> the, the, it's the Picard show. I don't know. Yeah, but, but Star Trek Picard just doesn't doesn't quite yeah, work. It doesn't. Somehow. It doesn't. I they sh they should call it Stargazer. 
if anybody from from Paramount or CBS is watching, you can have that one for free. Call it Star Trek Stargazer. That's oh, because that was his first ship, and it's about yeah. Picard. And I imagine I I can't imagine you know uh, Patrick Stewart is expecting to do ten of these. This is probably going to be a one shot deal. So mm -hmm. it'll be Picard sort of you know riding off into the sunset. So mm -hmm. yeah, call it Stargazer. Fuck, come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, and one thing that's always bothered me about this series, it was his previous command, which was, what, 11 years earlier? Yes. What did he do in the interim? Yeah, they never really, uh, <laughs> they, I mean, I think... They, they kind of yeah. they kind of weren't thinking when they said it was a ship he commanded before the Enterprise and it was lost 11 years earlier. You kind of create a gap there. Yeah. <laughs> well, and uh, the other thing that they, they, they don't really spend a lot of time on, I mean, they mention it, but it's not like treated like a big deal is apparently he captained the stargazer for like 20 years i mean he was captain of the stargazer for way longer than he was captain of the enterprise d or even the enterprise e if we assume that you know he he wasn't captain after the events of nemesis for a hell of a long time um i mean that's that's like a huge chunk of that dude's life that i mean it's been explored in like books and comics and stuff but yeah, on, I mean, the on expanded screen, universe it's always a bit questionable yeah on screen we know almost nothing about it you know so my problem with expanded universe stuff a lot of times is that they will take every existing piece they can find and glom them together yeah and uh you end up with like it's like there's an entire galaxy and we're dealing with the same 20 people again yeah, yeah. I don't know. Some of the it, it, it I'm it. it like the, there was, I saw the, yeah. I, I saw the, the 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 blurb on the back of a, a Deep Space Nine novel some years ago, that I guess uh, was a was Quark's brother was a Rom was yeah. a Grand Nagus, yeah. and they have Kieran Arisa and Cisco is back, and then they have you know Esri Dax is in command of a ship, and she comes by, and then yeah. you know Captain Riker and his ship with it's like. There are more people. You don't have to deal with the same people every single time. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, it's expanding the universe. We're not doing the show anymore, so they marry everyone off. And every, <laughs> it, 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 you know, just... I, I, I haven't been reading the the recent. I've the, I haven't read any of the novels for years, and I haven't. Yeah, me neither. I haven't read. I've read the. Um, uh, I've read a, a good bit of the IDW comics, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have been pretty good. But uh, but like the most of the ones I've read are are set in the Kelvin verse. They're like continuing mm -hmm. adventures of that crew, and and some of those are pretty good. And then they've also done like some next gen and some Deep Space mm -hmm. Nine, like just like mini series type stuff. And th those that I have read have been pretty good. But um, you know, a lot of it. Through, I flipped yeah. through one in a store, and apparently Robert April was involved, and they found some way to make him the first captain of the Enterprise, even though he clearly wasn't, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they it doesn't really. I, yeah, that that doesn't really. I mean, you just have you just kind of have to go with it. But yeah, apparently, according to that, there was an Enterprise before the Enterprise that we saw being built in Star Trek that Pike commanded, and it's like, and it was just what was it, the Enterprise negative A? Like, what was that? The, the Enterprise Zero, um, but they they don't really spend a lot of time on that. They're just like, oh, yeah, Pike, he was captain of another of an earlier Enterprise, and blah 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 blah. blah you know, and you're, yeah. not, you're not really supposed to think about it. But yeah, I mean, when I was when, when next, I remember when when Next Gen was still on the air, and uh, and they were doing like the tie-in novels and stuff. I mean, it was the same deal where like it's not canon and it doesn't count mm -hmm. unless it's on screen, but. But the, back then, the novels were written so that they could fit into the show. Mm -hmm. And and the novels were basically written like each book was like it could have been an episode of the show. Nothing right. happened in it that was that outrageous, you know, that you yeah. would think, oh, they wouldn't do this on the show. Like it, it was, And I liked that. Like I thought that was cool. Yeah. And I haven't read any of the later stuff, so I don't know. Maybe it's great too. But, but it doesn't appeal to me as much because it feels like – you know, oh, hey, it's Deep Space Nine, but Riker's there and Picard's there. And here, and it's like, it, it like if everything is like this massive franchise. Oh, look, Neelix standing, is there too for some reason. Yeah. And it's like, why? Why is this? Like, it, if, if you want to do like the continuing adventures of Deep Space Nine, like that's awesome. I'm right there for that. But write them so that they could plausibly be episodes of that show. Don't make it like, you know, oh, everybody else from every other series is here. 
<laughs> and, and apparently, it, apparently yeah. in the novels, they destroyed Deep Space Nine and built a new one. Yeah, I read that. Yeah, there's a I'm new like, Deep Space Nine. Is that really necessary? Is that really necessary? <laughs> <laughs> Considering it's a book and you can't see it anyway. Like, yeah. no, trust us. In your mind's eye, imagine. It's a really cool new Deep Space Nine. <laughs> oh, it's exactly okay. the same Deep Space Nine. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's... Um, but yeah, I you know, the, the expanded universe stuff is... Like, like, and then the novels, they contradict each other because the supporting characters end up having different fates and different paths and so on because, you know, it's none of it really is official, yeah. even though it's approved. So the same characters can have multiple different fates, you know? My favorite, my favorite version of that is, at least in the comics, and I think there are probably other versions of this as well, like from in, in the books, but in the comics, I know of at least three different versions of how Kirk left the Enterprise the first time, you know, like the end of the five year mission. There are at least mm -hmm. there are at least three different versions of that story that have been told. And it feels like every time a new comic publisher gets the license, like they tell their version of that story. <laughs> and it's like, OK, and none of them like all of them are OK. None of them are like great. None of them are like, wow, that would have been a, an, an awesome way to end the TV show. You know what I mean? Like it just feels like, oh, OK. That's, that's Even nice. Star Trek Continues didn't come up with a, a good way to do that. No, no. I mean, it, well, yeah. It, again, it, it was like, oh, it, that's it's okay. It's I don't hate yeah. it, but it's not like it. It doesn't feel like, oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like like uh, <laughs> uh, all good things was like such a. It's like oh, what a perfect last episode of Next Generation. And yes. and and none of these have quite nailed that quality of like life goes on, the adventure continues, but mm -hmm. this chapter has been closed and you know, they never quite get that, but they don't stop trying. <laughs> <laughs> they never will. As long as there's money to be made, they'll, yeah. they'll keep trying. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't read. I know that when, when I was a, you know, a teenager in DC had the, uh, the license for Star Trek comics. Yeah. And some of those were pretty good. And then uh, <clears throat> there were all sorts of people who were wanting DC to cross over Star Trek with the DC universe and have the, the DC characters. And they flatly <laughs> refused. They, right. they would not do that. And then they lost the contract. It went to Marvel. And the first thing Marvel did was Star Trek X-Men. <laughs> yes. Because, and, it's like, and so now it's circled around. And now DC, <coughs> excuse me. DC does have uh, the cross. They've done the crossovers, and I've seen Green Lantern. I've seen Legion of Superheroes, and they yeah. And it's it's one of those things. I guess it's a fan service, but there's really no need for any of that. <laughs> yeah, it's that's it's the thing where like, it's because yeah, the the crossover. The, I I read the Green Lantern crossover, and it was and again it was with like the Kelvin timeline crew, and. And I, like, it was neat. It was, it was okay. It was what it was. I didn't hate it, but there's something about me. There's something about the way I approach Star Trek and, and Star Wars too, although I'm not as big a fan of Star Wars, but, but I, you know, it's like, if I, if, if I know that this would never happen on screen, it's something about it, it, it. There's a little bit of a barrier that keeps me from really, really loving it. You know what I mean? It's like, I can read the comic book and I think like, this is neat and it's clever and there are some really cool moments in it, but it's like, they're never, there's, this is never going to happen. Like they're never going to make a there's, Star Trek Green Lantern crossover ever. And but there's always the, the hoops that they have to jump through to try to justify the crossover to explain how it's possible. And in many ways it ends up coming off as like a glorified fan fiction with a stamp of approval on the front cover. Yeah. Yeah. And, because fan know, fiction is is rife with with crossovers and sometimes the weirdest crossovers and yeah they they usually don't work at all occasionally they do yeah but uh yeah there's and I won't go into any details on that you know nobody cares <laughs> nobody but cares. <laughs> but there, there there are some that are are good but for the most part it's just like let's take these two completely disparate contradictory universes and glom them together somehow yeah. And, yeah Alternate universe is usually the best way to do that because somebody crosses over and that way you don't really have to explain, you know, yeah. stuff like how the, the Harry Potter universe exists in the Star Trek world, <laughs> you know? 
but yeah. yeah see i always liked and again this is just i i'm someone who is i just i most of the time i don't really give that much of a shit about continuity so like my like in the comic books and superhero comics my my favorite crossovers were the one shots where they were written completely out of continuity with the rest of the books and it was like superman and spider-man just were at the same place at the same time and it was no big deal you know what I mean? And like, and for the sake of that story, they just existed in the same universe and there was no crossover. There was no like portal to a parallel universe. It was just like, oh, the Punisher just came to Gotham City because that's a thing he can do because they live in the same world. He visited Archie. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like, it doesn't make any sense. It's not compatible with anything else in any other book, but who cares? It's just a one shot crossover and let's just go with it. And I like those because you know, it's just, you, you don't waste time saying like, but how are they in the same universe? And how does this, how, how was this, you know, you, you don't burden yourself with the continuity. Else. You just tell your story. Yeah. And it and it makes it more fun that way, you know? And I know like with fanfic, different people, I guess, you know, different people look for different things in fanfic and different people uh, who write fanfic do it for, for their own reasons. I know when I wrote fanfic <laughs> and, and I still do occasionally, um, like, and occasionally you read it out loud on and, YouTube. And occasionally <laughs> I read it out loud on YouTube. Um, like to me, the, the fun part to me as a writer is pretending that I'm writing an episode of the show. So I try not to go too far outside of the established parameters of, of whatever the thing is that I'm writing about. Like if it's Star Trek, like even when I did that, um, that story I read out loud about the death of Picard, like I tried to keep it within the confines of something that you would see on the show where you know it didn't have every fucking recurring character that ever existed come <laughs> out there wasn't i didn't write like a big funeral scene for picard where like everybody was there and it was it's just, like you know, and, and hugh the borg shows up and gives yeah. an impassioned speech about him yeah, yeah. <laughs> no and it was and and i also i left i left data dead because he was dead at the end of the last movie. And even though they sort of teased, like maybe B4 was developing some data like characteristics. And, and that is actually how they brought data back in the comics. They basically. Yeah, I seem to remember that with yeah. like the, the lead in to explain how a supernova threatens the universe. Yeah. And, uh,. <laughs> And uh, yes. yeah, and then Data's in command of a ship because it's before who had all the memories downloaded. So yeah, you can just it, 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 that was a, a much more obvious loophole than a quick remember and into yeah. the chamber. Yeah, and it's like okay, they did that in the comics, and that's fine. And yeah, I know like Alex Kurtzman uh, considers those comics to be canon or at least quasi canon because they were they were written like you know intentionally to bridge the franchises mm -hmm. and you know. And that's, that's fine. But like, for me, I was going by what happened on screen and on screen data still dead. So for my story, I left data dead and I didn't, I didn't even really address it. Like I didn't say yeah. anything about B4. I didn't explain what the status is. I just, I just left it. Data's dead and nobody really talks about it. And I felt like it was more fun for me as a writer that way because mm -hmm. I'm right. And then, then I'm, I'm writing an episode of the show. I'm not writing like a fan service fanfic where like everybody has a, a, a cameo. You know, yeah. and like we, oh, we, I went and broke my, my, my holla, my, my transporter brother, Thomas Riker out of prison so he could come and say goodbye too. It's like, no, that wouldn't happen. That's, you know, <laughs> that it's just, it's better if it's just, you know, uh, something that could plausibly happen in the real show. But, you know, not everybody, obviously not everybody's like that. Some people enjoy yeah. the freedom and say, well, it's my story. I can do whatever the hell I want. And yeah. then they off to the races, you know. <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah, some of the most bizarre combinations of things that really don't belong together, you know. It, it, yeah, you can go to fanfiction.net and find some of the most bizarre... It's like, you look at it, it's like, who would have even conceived of this? <laughs> yeah. And like you say, some of them, some of them are fun, and some yeah. of them are clever, but usually it, it's, you know, it, it feels like what it is, which is fan service and fanfic, and it's just, it's, it, it's, it, that's always been a barrier to me. To be like, you know, I can enjoy it, but I, I can never really just love it because I think like it just it keeps reminding me that that this isn't really the thing, yeah. you know, it's like you're not going to, you know, you're going to watch Star Trek Discovery and Hal Jordan is not going to show up. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not. I, I, and, you know, I, at least I hope he's not. <laughs> I mean, like, I really I'm not looking for that, that, Hal yeah, Jordan Star, to show up. Star Trek as a franchise, has had some very low moments, but I don't think it's ever completely jumped the shark. That would be the moment. <laughs> no. I think that, I mean, they really, as much as I've enjoyed Discovery and as much as I enjoy, as, as I, I, I look like I'm going to enjoy this current season, like, they, they have to be a little more careful of, of, of referencing themselves. 
because Discovery's done that a little, I, I, I won't say too much, but they've been very liberal about, you know, like, oh, by the way, Burnham is Spock's foster sister. And now, and Spock looks to play, he's going to play like at least a prominent role in this season. I don't think he's yeah. going to be like a regular or anything, but he's yeah. going to show up and be a, a big important part. And it's like, you have to be careful with that because you, 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 you want to do your own show. You don't yeah, want to do I, like I, someone else's show, you know? Yeah, I did say that for a show that's about exploring strange new worlds, they, they do spend a lot of time going back to the well. They've yeah, got yeah. the mirror universe has now shown up in four of six Star Trek series, the same mirror universe. Yeah. This season had the Enterprise at the end. It's going to have, so I had Sarek all over it. Yeah. It's like, you can, again, same 20 people. You can do your own thing. You don't need yeah. to, to, to tether yourself to what's come before. I mean, yeah. you didn't with the set design, and that's a good thing, but you know, don't tell yourself on the stories either. Yeah, it's like I said when I reviewed the uh, the short tricks and the, in the the yeah, Harry Mudd showed up. It's like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Well, Harry really not necessary. No, and and in the uh, in the Saru short trick, which I thought was was pretty good, I really enjoyed it. But it's like you know, of course, the uh, the 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 person who shows up from Starfleet to answer Saru's signal is. Giorgio is Philippa Giorgio who will become Captain Giorgio. And it's like, I get it. It's cool. It establishes like that. They have this long standing relationship, but also, like I said in the video, it's like, wow, small galaxy, huh? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I guess the same five people just know each other and they are involved in everybody else's major adventures. And, you know, that's one of the things that even though it didn't really, it didn't stop me from enjoying the movies, but I felt like it would, it, it was a little bit of a detriment to like the 2009, the Kelvin verse star Trek, because it's like the Muppet baby syndrome. It's like, Oh, so they've all known each other since they were 20 years old, you know, instead of, instead of Kirk, like meeting Spock when he is assigned to be captain of the enterprise, which in my, which you would imagine that's probably how it would have happened. Cause Spock was already there or with Pike. Mm -hmm. Kirk gets command of the ship, comes aboard. Oh, oh, Commander Spock, first officer, blah, blah, blah. That's probably how they met. And then they formed a friendship from there. No, no, no. They've known each other since they were in the academy. And, you know, it's like, okay. And, oh, and wow, Dr. McCoy was on the same shuttlecraft when Kirk was going to the academy. It's like, okay, it's like, wow, small galaxy. Yeah, and to an extent, and to an extent, television requires that because you can't have like a you know, say like World War II where there's thousands of people yeah. in different places who are all you know, playing a major role. When you do a TV show, it has to center on the characters to an extent, and I understand yeah. that. But having the entire universe hinge on the same ten people all the time <laughs> is kind of yeah. a disservice. <clears throat> I mean, even Babylon 5, while well, everything happened pretty much in you know the station and the people who were there, you know, when they went back to their homes, home worlds, uh, they, they still shuffled up the cast a bit. You know, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't the same. <coughs> excuse me. It wasn't. You know, ten people who all by themselves determined the entire fate of the universe. Yeah. Well, and, and Babylon Five had there. There were references and sort of hints at important things that happened that didn't involve those people or that mm -hmm. happened before the show started. Mm -hmm. You know, where with with the Star Trek show, it's and it's weird. Like every show has that. So when it's next generation, it's the fate of the universe rests on the shoulders of Picard and his crew. And then when it moves to Deep Space Nine, it's, okay, now the fate of the universe rests on these people. <laughs> oh, Voyager? Okay, now the fate of the universe rests on these people. And it's like, wow, so this just happens all the time, I guess. Like, every, every starship has the fate of the entire universe resting on its yeah. shoulders. It's now one of the things like the Dominion War broke out off screen and all of a sudden Star Trek The Next Generation turns into a show where the ship is involved in a war. You, know, you have right. to see that happen on screen. So you know, it's, you know, all the important stuff happens with the people we follow. Yeah, and that, and, yeah, and and like that you is said. A, that, that is a narrative requirement to an extent. It's not like... Yeah. It's it's not like you're writing a novel where you can have 200 characters if and and try to get people to care about them. You have to yeah. limit it. But still, it's when when you're doing a brand new show and you when you're doing Discovery and you bring back the Mirror Universe and you bring back Harry Mudd and you bring back Sarek and you bring back the Enterprise. It's like no, you had 13 episodes. Was it 13 episodes? Yeah, I think it was 15 you, in the first season. Yeah. Okay, but you've got you've got X number of episodes. And you're bringing back all these elements that already existed. It's like, do your own thing. Yeah. And I think the, the like, 
the show is is confident enough and is good <clears throat> enough. Like the original stuff, the original characters are are all definitely good enough but now they've got pike and spock too yeah and you know like pike is an interesting situation because pike is obviously a pre-existing character um but we've never really other than bruce greenwood in the movies who is now who is playing a different version of the character Mm -hmm. um you know you don't really you've never really seen a lot from pike like you got the cage and you got the menagerie and that's it which is the same thing which is the same yeah, which is the same thing except for the beep chair <laughs> stuff when he doesn't really say a whole lot um that's so it wasn't him <laughs> so it's a you, it was a different actor it was a different actor yeah so um so you've never seen much from from the original version of pike and that's who anson mount is playing he's playing the original like uh jeffrey hunter cage pike and so so that's kind of interesting because you you, you've never seen that character actually get to have a show and be explored and be a real character but it's still it's a reference you know it's like remember captain pike well now he's going to be on this show and it it feels like you know okay uh, i mean and and i like pike so far Uh, from the first episode it looks like he's going to be a really cool character um, but you feel but, like they could have just as easily made him Captain Winter from the, uh, yeah. you know, from the Excalibur, and you're, you'd be in the same place. Yeah, and it feels like even though even though it it looks like it's going to be good, and even though you know Mount as Pike looks like he's going to do terrific and will be a nice addition to the show, there is a part of it. It feels a little bit like like they're still trying to have a safety net, like they're still trying to say like, well, yeah, I know this is all still very new and you have all of these new characters. And, you know, maybe if you're a classic Star Trek fan, it doesn't seem like you're a cup of tea. But, oh, look, here's Captain Pike. You know him. Here's Spock. You know him. And yeah, I feel like the show is easily strong enough to do without that. Yeah, I mean, the next hopefully they will eventually. The next generation kind of went the opposite way. When they yeah. did the episode with with Sarek, they they decided they weren't even going to mention Spock's name. Picard yeah. made a reference to being at Sarek's son's wedding, but they didn't name him because they yeah. didn't want to do that. They didn't want to 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 get by by you know as many references to pre existing things as possible. They wanted to do something original. And yes, they were bringing in Sarek, but they did something very different with him in yeah. that episode. And he was and, very uh, different than we had seen him previously. Yes. Yeah. And so, and then now you've got this, and it's very much the opposite approach. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'll just say this real quick, and then we can wrap up because we've been going for almost two hours. But, um, you know, I, I often think about how just amazing it is that Star Trek The Next Generation became a success. <laughs> because if you think about, you know, now we're like 20 years later, and we're like, well, of course, it was a great show. But, Think about 1987. They're still making movies with the original cast. In mm-hmm. fact, they just made Star Trek IV, which was the most successful and popular movie with the original cast. Plus, the reruns are still on all the time. So that's that Star Trek. And now they're like, we're going to do a new Star Trek show. It's not set in the same time period even. Um, it's a different ship. It's all different characters. Nobody you know will be on this show. And Shatner and, and Nimoy both gave their official stamp of disapproval. At the yeah, time. yeah, and and you know, and and yet not it it, it kind of limped along and just sort of survived for the first two years, and right. then at but then at the end of season three, after Best of Both Worlds, it was like all of a sudden it was like oh shit, this is awesome, and and it became it kind of took over and became the dominant form of Star Trek, and it's just and it amazing. Didn't even, it didn't even have a network at a time when no. networks still dominated. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's amazing that, it's amazing to me that they would even try it. <laughs> that they would even, that they would say to Gene Roddenberry, oh yeah, go ahead. Do a completely different show with all new characters that's not even, that for all all practical purposes isn't even set in the same world. Because it's a hundred years later and like the, the status quo is totally different. Um, and yet, yeah, go for it. Do it. And and eventually, after some some wobbly beginnings, it totally worked. Yeah. You know? I understand that to, to sweeten the deal to try to get the, the syndication to work, uh, they actually stated that for uh, that uh, if the show didn't make it past the first season, that they would include the next generation in the syndication package for the original series at no extra charge for X number of years. Yeah. Well, yeah, because, I mean, the, uh, well, the like the original series, even though it's one of the most successful rerun syndicated shows ever, 
um, that's less than 100 episodes. And that's pretty rare for a show that has less than 100 episodes to be that lucrative in syndication. Because usually 100 episodes is like the, the threshold where they're like, okay, if you made 100 episodes, we'll buy it and we'll syndicate it because that's, right. you know, we can show they, it every day. It aired five times a week yeah. at 100 episodes. That's still only 20 weeks, which is, is barely like, you know, five months. Right. <laughs> right. Know? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, they they thought well shit. If we do even if we do one season of Next Gen and that's it, it bumps the Star Trek syndication package up over a hundred episodes. So we at least we got that, you know. And, and instead, got, it's really taken off. I mean, it's yeah. Well, it's it for people our age and even a little younger. Like it is Star Trek. It's mm -hmm. what you think of. Most people who are our age or, or in the same sort of. And there you know, was that goofy older show. <laughs> yeah, it's like people when you, when people think of. Star Trek. They think of Captain Picard. That's that's their guy. They think of Data. That's Star Trek. They're and like yeah. a new generation of Doctor Who fans. You know, there's yeah. there was that goofy, low budget, cheap older show, and then there's the real Who that we do now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the goofy, low budget older show that they did for like thirty years in a row. Yeah, they did twenty six seasons <laughs> of they, the original series, and then they took a break, and now <laughs> they brought it back, and now they do a new one. But yeah, it's it's really is amazing, and you know, and then after Next Generation, there was like that period of God, what was it? It was like um, it was like fifteen or sixteen years of of eighteen years maybe of like of just continual production. There was always a Star Trek show being made. Yeah, it was um, it was eighteen years because yeah. there was seven years of Next Generation and then seven years of Voyager and then four years of Enterprise. So eighteen right. years straight, they did exactly the same show. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and with Deep Space Nine in the middle there, sort of crossing between yeah. Next Gen and Voyager. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty it amazing. It yeah, we should probably wrap up though at yeah. this point. If we're gonna, yeah, we better not start talking about Deep Space Nine. Or we'll be here all day. Um, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so this was good. This was a good idea to do sort of a potpourri show. Um, uh, no, it's not potpourri. Uh, you're, it's 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 pot o fu. <laughs> we are going to get such crap from Pierre for how that was pronounced. Pierre, yes, Pierre, and also my friend Julie, who is going to be like, you didn't pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Sorry. Well, maybe we can Sorry, do a Julie. Maybe we can do a correction at the beginning of the next Pierre. <laughs> yes. You know what? I should just, I need to do, I, I actually listened to it on uh, Google Translate to get the right pronunciation. And I guess I forgot because I'm pretty sure I'm not saying it right. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this will, this, this, that'll be it for this month. We'll come back next month and do another one of these about something. The, the shutdown will probably still be going on. Yeah. And we'll, we'll both have our backgrounds up. This is the first time we've <laughs> both actually gone that route That's at the right. same time. That's right, because we are professionals. <laughs> I have my backdrop up, and you have yours, and it's that's what yep. professionals do. They do yep. it in a room, and then they don't let people see it. <laughs> so, well, my my wife has been saying since we've started doing Pierre that I should at least put in lights. I should do the lighting. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's important. That's important. But I figured, yeah, you know, when we did that midweek one, right, the week I was like, let's try. I got time, you know, just set it up, and it's, it's I, I actually rather like it. It's yeah, it's, it's great. It, it's better. Let's have so, some fun. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can get a green screen, and we can have both have green screens. We can change the backgrounds that we have between. <laughs> <laughs> we could have uh, we we could um, you could be on uh, a starship, and I could be on the I could be at ops of Deep Space Nine. <laughs> And we can do the crossfade instead of the hard cuts yeah, that you were experimenting that's, with that's before, right. we went, that, uh, before we went live. That's right. That I, I, I opted against because I like a, when we're going, when we're having a back and forth with a conversation, I think it works better to have a nice hard cut. Actually, you know what? Here, let me give you the crossfade. <laughs> before we'll we let, go. We'll let the people at home decide. Okay. I'll add the crossfade and, and we'll, be, just, we'll just see yeah. how it looks. Okay. Fade. There we go. All right, now, this is what it would look like with the crossfade. Ooh, see? And then I'm like, blah, 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 blah. You start talking, and then we crossfade. And then I start talking, and the crossfade's back. And then... <laughs> I don't know. It's a little... I like it better with a hard cut. I think the hard cut works better. It's more traditional, too. It's a little... That... Uh, it, it's, yeah. The, 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 the fade is too spongy. Yeah, the, the, the fade, it, it has its place, but I don't know that this is it. <laughs> no you need a, a nice hard cut there you go that's much better all right so anyway now that we now that we've resorted to fucking around with transitions i think it's time to call this to an end we'll get some feedback on that i we're, suppose we're screwing with transitions during Why? the show um so yeah let's wrap this up thank you so much everybody for watching 
and uh, we will be back uh, next month to do this all over again. So, bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>